Hey there. How you doing? Let me uh, pin this to my robe here. Here we go. <laughs> I haven't had enough caffeine today. This is what I'm like when I'm mellow. Did I almost say smellow? Mellow. There we go. Here's my GFX 100. Yay! I, uh, I saved up for half a year and I sold five of my most expensive lenses, including two 300mm 2.8s, 600mm f4, which is an enormous lens about the size of a tank. And it is worth every bit of it, of course. Of course, I, I had borrow of this camera last year twice for a total of about a month and a half. This camera is just unbelievably good and just... No, it's not a hardcore sports action wildlife camera. There are other cameras for that. Form follows function. It's the right tool for the right job. But my God, this camera is incredible. I keep getting asked by people, that well, what about that GFX 100? You, you, you still happy you spent so much money on it? The answer to that is hell yes. Um, it takes a lot to impress me because I'm a bit of a snarky uh, guy that is not easily impressed. And I've owned a lot of cameras, worked in a few camera stores, fixed cameras, photography school. I've, I've owned and I used to own Leicas. I used to own a couple of Hasselblads. I grew up with twin lens reflex cameras, shot before by five, printed and processed more film than God. Um, I owned every major Nikon uh, digital camera, including most of their film cameras. Back in photography school, my favorite was a pair of Nikon D4Ss. I think I even slept with one. I love that camera so much. Nikon D4S, that was my uh, tool in uh, photography school. Now that I'm older and jaded, you know, and it takes a lot to impress me, I have to say there's never been a point in history and I mean this literally, because even people that can't stand me, like, I don't like that guy, he's got a squeaky voice, and he's a bit of a smug, he's smug, he's an arrogant, this is what I hear sometimes on the photography forum, he's arrogant and he's smug, and he's a P-R-I-C-K, and uh, I will agree with you, but the one thing that all those people have in common, whether they like me or they hate me, is like, you know, this guy actually genuinely likes this stuff, and he spends his money on it. And I've never before been so impressed by a camera company. People actually a little bit lately have been complaining to me, especially the people that like my field theory videos. You're like, oh, geez, you've been too many damn videos on Fujifilm lately. So what's wrong with you? <laughs> it's just that lately they've been so much to talk about, like the X-T4, for example. I can't wait till I actually get my, my tattooed fingers on that camera, whenever that will be. And... Uh, the X100V, uh, what an amazing camera. So much more of a big improvement over that of the X100F versus the F versus the T, or the T versus the S prior to that. Um, just think of what's happened in the past couple years. This never happened with, uh, with uh, Nikon and not with uh, Canon either. Fujifilm dominated the medium format market. They literally own everybody's butt, as I've said a hundred times. I mean, I was the first person to say that. Long before the GFX 50S dropped, which I have one of those, and the 50R. And people also, too, ask me, it's like, why do you love the GFX 50R? Why do you call that your favorite camera instead of this beast? And the answer is simple. I mean, it's a, it's a simple camera. I've got insurance on that camera and this camera, so if I dropped it or it got stolen or something, I'm, I'm perfectly covered. By the way, the insurance on this camera is $56 a year for a zero deductible, 100% coverage. That's an inland marine insurance policy, i.e. also called a personal articles policy. You can get it from State Farm, Farmer's Insurance, blah, blah, blah. The reason why the 50R is still my favorite camera is because it's very simple, and it's a brick, and it's uh, unassuming, and I'm not afraid to like take it out into the nitty-gritty, you know, the dirty, muckety areas. Um, Obviously, this is a better camera in basically every way than the GFX 50R, but there are those things that you love, kind of like if some of these rich guys, and I'm not rich at all, they have like a Lamborghini, but their favorite car is like an old Chrysler or something like that, like an old Cobra. It's nowhere near as fast or as fancy, but that's still their favorite. That's kind of the perfect analogy for me in the 50R versus this, the GFX uh, 100. But 
getting to the damn point, right, which sometimes I actually uh, engage in a logo maki. There's a word everybody should use. It means flapping your lips unnecessarily. Canon or Nikon have never had an epoch like that at any point in time. Neither has Hasselblad, neither has Leica. No camera company has had, you know, a window of time where they just literally blew the pants off of everybody. It's just like one amazing product after the other. And I never assume, or I'm not uh, presuming that uh, Fujifilm nor their cameras are perfect. Everything is, you know, there's no such thing as a perfect camera, but... I mean, look at the X-T line, the X-T2, X-T3, and the X-T4. Um, look at the GFX line. Overnight, Fujifilm owns everybody on medium format. Look at the X-100 series, the latest iteration, the X-T30. I told everybody in the world basically to buy that as a perfect uh, do-it-all camera for 800 bucks. I mean, wow. I, I should have brought my X-T30. I have an X-T30. Um, thank God Fujifilm listened. I told them they should put a joystick on the next uh, version of that, so there wasn't one on the X-T20. But, uh, I'm not beholden to this company in any way, shape, or form when I actually talk about it. And, you know, I didn't write a free book on Fujifilm, and I'm continuing to update it, you know, for my own edification or, or, or grandeur. I actually do like genuinely being helpful. I get emails every day from people, and, you know... Like, since most of you never met me, like 99.9% .9 of you never met me, you know, I'm really, because I kind of come off snarky and a little bit uh, odd in these videos, but I do that for sake of drama and humor. Um, you know, when I met all those, literally as thousands of people up in New York at Photo Plus, I mean, I was hugging everybody and super friendly. I mean, I'm extremely diplomatic in person. And uh, everybody loved, uh, I couldn't, I didn't actually get to see anything in New York because everybody was stopping me every five steps I took. Literally, I could not, sometimes, there was a few times there where I wanted to go to the bathroom, then I meet somebody and it's like, I'm not trying to rush you off, I'm going to use the bathroom. Then I go another five steps and the bathroom is kind of far away and someone else has stopped. <laughs> that literally happened more, and I think it happened two or three times. And then I developed the ploy to, when I needed to go to the bathroom, to walk really quickly. So, like, if anybody saw me, I'd just be a blur. <laughs> That's a true story, by the way. Totally true. Um, but, you know, I put my own money into this. You know, my own money is in this. Yes. As well as my other Fujifilm cameras. And I own all the GFX lenses and all the X-Series lenses except for one, the 18 millimeter. And, uh, no, there's, I've just never seen anything like it. Like I said, I'm, I'm really, really, even the people that hate me would have to conclude that, like, you know, I'm jaded. You know, I am, I am really jaded. And it does take a lot to impress me, but I've never been so impressed with a, a camera system collectively. Um, I pointed out when I thought that they were making mistakes like uh, the placement of the Q button on the X100F, the really, really bad lens cap design. This was like one of the older 1835s. The original lens cap had that dome on it. That's why it has a third-party lens cap on this 18 to 135. They since changed that. And there is no perfect camera company, but Nikon or Canon or anybody else ever got that close, much less on their spectrum of products. So... So all of the people out there that I helped answer questions on for free, by the way. <laughs> I just thought I'd stick that in there. You know, I'm glad I could be helpful. I actually do like being helpful. I would make a great teacher. The only problem would be, it'd be like, who's that teacher? He's fat, bald, and covered in tattoos. <laughs> I don't think that matters anymore, really, because everybody's got tattoos. Um... Seemingly everybody does, but not this many. I crossed an invisible line. When you get so many tattoos, it's like, oh, that's a lot of tattoos. You might have you, you, you might have got too many. <laughs> so, just remember, I'm not nutty. I just uh, throw in some drama and humor in these videos because it makes people laugh. Yeah. Right after this video, I'm going to turn on some classical music and study, do some writing. 
That's uh, kind of my life, you know? I love this camera. But the first thing I did when I got it was I got it insured. <laughs> um, personal articles policies are brilliant. You should look into getting one of them, especially for your camera gear. Anyway, I'm working on the third edition of my free Fujifilm, free Fujifilm book, but because of all the recent releases by Fujifilm, I have to include the X100V in there and some other stuff. And uh, But it's coming along fine. I should be done in about a month with the Fujifilm book. It would have been earlier, but I've just been so busy. I hope you have a lovely week. That's it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Fujifilm.